Okay, we're getting ready to start Module 4. We have uh, the lecture series in Module 4. is going to be audio only. The only picture we're going to have is the one that you have of this water coming down this canyon. It's basically there to take the place of my desktop. This particular um, lecture series is probably going to be in six parts, each one running, each part running about eight to ten minutes. Uh, since it's audio only and we're not going to be um, loading up a bunch of pictures, we should have enough uh, bandwidth to be able to uh, handle uh, about 10 minutes. <clears throat> this particular topic, um, uh, this chapter 4, this module 4, is the beginning of our uh, um, use of the book Original Instructions. The Original Instructions book was put out by the Bioneers, which is a, a group of people who have put together um, conferences uh, around the United States and possibly even the world talking about a variety of uh, environmental issues um, and environmental justice and alternative technologies and all kinds of things relating to uh, the future of the of the planet and one of the things they've done at all of these all of these uh, <clears throat> conferences is to include native speakers and so the book in original instructions is a compilation of speeches given by uh, indigenous leaders at the uh, Bioneers Conference. And you will see as we go through this book, these indigenous leaders come from all over the world. Now, <clears throat> the first chapter is about the application of eco-spiritual values, ecological spiritual values. And so, um, in order to put the proper context on that uh, particular topic, what we're going to do is spend some time talking about the relationship between science, Western science, and indigenous knowledge. Now, um, the best way to approach this is probably through the process of uh, comparison. And so we're going to spend some time talking about some particular aspects of Western science. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about some specific act, uh, aspects of indigenous knowledge. Each one of these, um, I mean, um, I may, I'll probably cover a topic uh, within each one of these um, short little um, uh, lectures here, audio lectures. Now, one of the things that... Uh, when we look at Western science, we have to consider Western philosophy because worldviews are reflected in the philosophy of the people who, who hold a particular worldview. And when we look at the West, uh, we have to go back and, and look at some of the philosophical bases, the philosophical structure of, of the West uh, in order to understand not only how the West thinks, but also what this has to do with science, and how did science grow out of this Western philosophy. And when we go back, um, we have to go back to um, at least as far back as the Greeks, and possibly further back into the Middle East with uh, the development of Hammurabi's laws as the first written forms of laws. But primarily, we're looking at the um, the uh, the Greek philosophers with Socrates. One of the things that when we start looking at those guys from that far back, we're, we're talking, you know, um, you know, several hundred years before the time of Christ. We're looking at twenty five hundred years ago, probably. They were looking for truth. And this is kind of interesting because they became fixated on this idea of, of, of the truth and what is real and not real. And the question came up of how do you know and something is real or not real. And they, they came to the conclusion that they could not trust their senses, that um, <clears throat> there's something about the senses, and that includes emotion, that is untrustworthy. Uh, you can have you can have sensual experiences, but those sensual experiences are not necessarily the truth. And it gradually progressed to where um, the truth was best understood through the mind, and not through the physical um, physical um, uh, perceptions. This was 
kind of uh, underlying philosophy uh, developed. And so by the time the 16th century came around, uh, 1500s, uh, you start having the, the rise of science. You start having uh, science begin to challenge the hegemony or the power and authority of the church. So much so that you know a lot of the religious writings in, in, the, in the Bible have things like the earth being the center of the universe, which science gradually proved not to be true. But one of those things was that um, Copernicus uh, was threatened with going to jail because he had uh, been watching the movement of the planets and the sun and came to the conclusion that we rotate around the sun as a planet. And that was, of course, total opposition with the church. And so uh, there began this, this fight between faith, the church, and reason being the science. And during this period of time, a no number of things happened. And one of those, um, Sir Thomas Bacon developed this idea of the scientific method as a way of uncovering universal truth. And so the idea is that through observation and replication of a particular kind of experiment, that you can begin to um, you know, deduct uh, what the truth is about the world around us. And you, you, um, you, you have a hypothesis or a theory. You, um, <coughs> excuse me. you have your uh, experiment... Uh, then you replicate your experiment to see if it'll happen again, and at some point it does turn into, you know, what they would, what you would consider scientific proof following the scientific method. Now, in order to make this scientific method accessible by everybody, one of the things that happened was development of math as a universal language of science. So now in order to have science and understand science, you also have to understand math. And we start getting these very highly developed uh, concepts, conceptual math of calculus and trigonometry and, and uh, formulaic um, processes that are based in mathematics as a way of a language to define or describe the scientific process that just occurred. Now, another part of this idea of truth and uncovering the truth and developing the truth is this idea of progress. It seems to be built into the West somehow, and I'm not too sure where it became such a focus. But within the scientific world, progress is de defined as an increase in knowledge, and it's a very, very basic value. We have today hundreds of colleges throughout the United States that are considered what they call research institutions, and that means that they spend most of their time, most of their money, most of their effort doing research to create new knowledge as opposed to teaching and having relationships with their students. And, you know, the, 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 the research comes first. Also, within this context of the scientific method and the search for truth, not only is progress of basic value, but theoretical knowledge becomes privileged within that context. So that which is in theory is viewed as being perhaps more true or, yeah, more true than um, that which is practical or that which is applied. So we've had this process by which this, through the scientific method, we've come to this idea of trying to figure out what is universal truth. And that's been the role of science for, for quite some time. Now, um, as we look at this issue of truth, we find that um, it's not something that's just found in science within Western philosophy. It's also the basis for our judicial system. It's the basis for our philosophical system, our system of, of deductive reasoning. Um, logic is based on this idea that somehow there's a truth out there that's universal. And that all human beings will um, <clears throat> will find this truth at some point, and <clears throat> to a certain degree, the search for universal truth is also for those people who were um, the religious leaders in the fourteen and fifteen and sixteen hundreds. The idea of colonization came about because they held the religious truth, and they were going to colonize these uh, various areas of the world and take that truth to those people 
because those indigenous people didn't have the truth. It wasn't the truth that was uh, either revealed through the Bible or revealed through scientific method. And so we've had this idea of truth as being one of the, uh, and, uh, and the universal aspect of that truth as being one of the primary um, primary um, values within the context of um, of Western science. <clears throat>